and welcome to Art and Fashion with Dominique. That's me. Um, today we have Betsy Propane here with us, and we are going to be interviewing her about burlesque. We're actually filming at Paper Doll Vintage Boutique, which is our shop today, and uh, we have Betsy to talk about burlesque. Hi, how are you, Betsy? I'm good. How are you, Dom? Thanks for having me today. Oh, thanks for coming out. Cool. Um, so I wanted to talk about first, what is burlesque? Um, burlesque is a an art that started in the beginning of American culture. It's dated back to most famously in the 1920s and 30s, where vaudeville was, you know, the prime real estate of entertainment. People could pay 10 cents to see a all day variety show and then at night they would have these girly shows that were considered burlesque shows and it's the art of striptease so okay now um how did you get into burlesque um well i started doing burlesque in long island about three years ago um but i really took off my career when i started um as a student at the new york school of burlesque in um, new york city um with head mistress joe boops weldon um, they have a variety of classes that you can take, um, and I took the Essential Burlesque Series, which is a four-week class that teaches you all about the basics of burlesque, and it all started there. Okay. Now, what are some of the most common misconceptions about burlesque? I know there's the movie Burlesque with mm -hmm. Christina Aguilar and everything, and um, it portrays a certain type of burlesque and a certain idea of what people think burlesque is versus what it actually is. Um, so what are some of the most common misconceptions? Well, when you say the word striptease, I guess people think that you are a commonly known stripper. And it's a little bit more tasteful than that. I mean, being a stripper at a nightclub is a little bit different than a burlesque performer and striptease artist. There's a lot more, I guess, um, lavish costumes. Um, and I, for one, put a lot of work into my costumes personally. I mean, in New York City alone, there's about 2,000 or more burlesque performers. And it's more of like a... Really? Yeah, there's, it's more of like a show, it, and I think that, um, you know, there is singing and dancing involved, but there's a lot more, let's, I guess, performance art in it that makes it special. When I've seen a couple of, uh, a lot of burlesque performances, it seems to be more about the build-up and the anticipation of the actual reveal of really anything more than it is about naked bodies mm -hmm. and um, just about the body and kind of objectifying it. It's more about the actual performance itself, and there's a lot of, like, comedy elements brought into it, it seems. A lot of people use, like, funny props. There's also a lot of, like, beautiful costumes mm -hmm. and a lot of props, I guess I would say, and also, like, special talents that a lot of the performers have. Would yeah. you agree? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's sideshow involved in it. There's mm -hmm. contortion. Um, and I would say that the, the biggest thing is it's, it's a storytelling aspect. You know, you, there's a purpose, there's an execution, and then there's a reveal. So classic burlesque tells a story, and, you know, there's something to be left to the imagination about it, which makes it more of an art form, and that's why I identify with it mostly. Now so. there's there's two flip sides of I think the misconceptions that people have about burlesque because sometimes they might think it's close to stripping and on the other end of the the spectrum I think sometimes people don't expect necessarily to see as much of the body as is revealed in burlesque too. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Sometimes people think it's like clothed, choreographed routines, kind of like the pussycat dolls and things like that, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of the time it does strip down to, to pasties and a merkin or a thong, and there is a lot of skin that's shown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's mostly about, you know, looking at it like a celebration of the human body, and mm -hmm. the celebration of the female body, and the celebration of all of us in the same room enjoying and accepting that and not seeing it so much as a naked body but a performer that's confident and radiates and gives some of herself in each one of her performances or himself and um you know serving the audience with the celebration of life and vibrance and color and performing and if people can start to look at it that way and less of a, a exposed body and 
as an exploitation. And I think that, you know, it's been on a, such an up and coming vibe that more and more people are accepting it and saying, oh, okay, you know, like, this is something I'm not used to, but this is awesome. And it's an art form that we're trying to preserve and respect and give credit. And mm-hmm. it's, it's so cool. Like, we had a show in uh, Huntington at the Wright Bart Gallery. And we had some people that may or may not have came to a burlesque show, um, but they had such a good time, and it was a performance to them, and they didn't know what they were getting into, and it was nice to get such awesome rants and raves from them. So That was a great show. <laughs> I personally went to that show, and it was fantastic. I mean, Thank you had you. the burlesque performers, but in between, you also had sideshow acts, which is common with burlesque. You'll mix and match um, the variety, I guess, because it's based out of variety shows mm-hmm. of the 1920s and so on. Um, you'll have the burlesque performers as well as, like, sword swallowers and human blockheads and a strongman act in between while the performers get ready for the next stage of the show and do their costume changes to both fill time and add variety to the variety show, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's fun because like in the 21st century burlesque shows and the neo-burlesque shows, in the ones that I like to create in Long Island, um, back in the 20s and the 30s and the 40s and turn of the century where burlesque was made popular and common, um, it would be like a side show or a all-in-one or grind show, and then they would have the girly show, the burlesque show in between. So I kind of do like a reversal, and I have my side show in between of my mm-hmm. shows, and then the burlesque is like the feature. So it's almost like a reverse. Oh, okay. That's so, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, I never really, I guess I just put it all together now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow. I never, when you put now, it that you way. Actually, <laughs> um, you said he before. There is an emergence of some guy as well, correct? Yeah. They call it... Um, Boylesque. Boylesque. They have, um, okay. They have a Boylesque festival in New York City. Um, you know, some names are Tigger, Mr. Gorgeous, uh, Matt Knife um, in New York City. And that's also, Romeo. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. He performed with Dita Von Teese. Oh my gosh, yes. And <laughs> that, that tour is actually starting up again, the Strip Strip Parade tour. That was amazing. Yeah. Whew. Um, Internationally, there's yeah. boylesque too, so it's very cool. Now, where on Long Island can one go to see a burlesque show? Well, um, my newest prospect is at um, the Ripe Art Gallery in Greenlawn. It's on Park Avenue, and it is known as the Barn. Um, it it's right off Park Avenue and Broadway in Huntington Greenlawn on the border. It's owned by uh, my friend Sherry Rexer, and she has art shows there. We actually. Um, on August 22nd, we had a show called The Ripe Retro Revival, and it featured Marie Roberts, who is the <laughs> resident artist at Coney Island. Um, she's been painting there for years, and she is the banner painter there. So we featured her art, along with um, our friend Kristen McDougall, whose painting is up here, Shannon Klein, Suge uh, Gutierrez, and um, we also had the burlesque show there. So October 25th, we're having our Halloween edition at the Wright Bar That's Gallery. That's super exciting. Yeah, we're going to feature some New York and Long Island performers, and we're going to have some monster art and like a costume contest and stuff. So. Are there other venues on Long Island or even um, in the city that you would recommend for burlesque performances? Um, well, we have m- my friend El Dorado, who is a New Orleans resident now, but she grew up in Sayville right here. And Calamity Chang, they produce a show called Soiree Noir, mm-hmm. and that's at uh, George Martin's Strip Steak. The next show is, I believe, October 30th, and that is always a very glamorous night out. Um, and my um, my honey trick the bastard, he's a sideshow performer. He's going to be hosting that one. That's a Halloween show too. So sorry, I said a bad word. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, and where in the city would you recommend to go see burlesque performances? Oh my gosh, there, you could probably catch a burlesque show every night during the <laughs> week. Um, Monday, uh, Sunday nights is Kitty Nights, that's at the Mug Lounge in Manhattan. Um, every Wednesday and Thursday for the past six years, they've had a free burlesque show at Nurse Betty, which is on Norfolk Street at, off of the Delancey stop in the Lower East Side. Um, and Shelly Watson, Calamity Chang do that. Um, okay. It's a great show. Um, gosh, I mean... We just wrapped up burlesque at the beach at Coney Island um, on Friday. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. And, of course, there's the slipper room, too, as The slipper well. room, yeah. yeah. Um, Macau Trading Company. There's, oh, there's Hill and Dale. So many different venues. They're all such beautiful shows. Mm-hmm. Now, if somebody is interested in becoming a burlesque uh, 
performer, a burlesque dancer. What is some of the training, learning you could do, and how do you start out with performing? Um, well, you really, you know, starting out performing burlesque, you know, I always automatically say the New York School of Burlesque, but I'm actually going to be starting tonight, October, through October and November, I'm going to be starting the TJ Burlesque four-week classic burlesque series where you learn a little bit of the history, some movement, some choreography, playing with different props, and um, there's going to be a stocking class, a glove class, and that's all going to be at Tribal Dance Long Island in East Northport. Mm -hmm. That starts tonight. Um, it's a four-week series where you'll, at the end, be able to participate in a student showcase, and there's a boudoir photo shoot afterwards, um, and we're going to be holding the three-month anniversary recital at Wright Bar Gallery. Um, oh, okay. So that class starts tonight. The next one starts up again um, in October, I believe, October 14th. And Tribal Dance Long Island's in East Northport, so that, that'll be fun. And yeah. then are you... You were yeah, talking about teaching class here. We are hosting, we do individual classes here at Paper Doll Vintage Boutique, and the next one is actually this coming Sunday, I believe that's the 21st, and we are having Legs Malone, a New York City burlesque wow. performer, international star, who went to the London School of Burlesque, and she's going to be teaching a class this Sunday, where there's going to be a choreographed routine that everybody can learn with their own individual twists and spins on it, but it's uh, everybody will be able to take home a routine at the end of the evening to perform for anybody they'd like. <laughs> Legs Malone is awesome. She is really good. <laughs> um, the classes definitely teach you a lot about burlesque, whether you're looking to perform for an audience um, in front of a lot of people or if it's just for your personal, um, for anybody at home that you might be interested in performing for. And it also encourages self-body confidence and just, it, it's a lot of fun. A lot of girls do it for like a girls' night out mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's really great. Um, tell me a little bit about kittening. Oh, um, well, actually, um, stage kittening is how I started out about, wow, almost three years ago now. Um, Legs Malone actually used to do a burlesque show in Huntington called Burlesque After Dark. Mm -hmm. um, and kittening is basically, like, I like to call it, like, a stagehand in a Broadway or off-Broadway theater production. It's somebody that um, helps the performers get ready for their performances, any setup that they need, any cleanup that they need. Um, they sometimes will go around and sell raffle tickets, and it's basically just like the brains behind the burlesque operation, mm -hmm. and <laughs> they're always a huge help, and that's definitely a gateway to performing, because you um, incorporate yourself in the burlesque community, you get to meet other performers, you get to show them your personality, and you're actually a very big part of a burlesque show, because you have a lot of exposure in the show, and you get to be playful with the host and you get to become a character and develop your character and then that usually inspires girls to start performing so and it's awesome opportunity so now tell us about some of your acts well mm -hmm. I guess the one that I'm most famous for mm -hmm. started out kind of as a joke to myself but um I do I'm um, like a 1920s balloon pop in which it's like a beautiful gold balloons that cover my body and it inspired by a New Year's show a New Year's Eve show that I did um two years ago and I was supposed to look like champagne bubbles Aww. and <laughs> yeah so that's my most comical act it's a twist on the classic um routine with a Glenn Miller song um I did that show I did that performance um at the the um in New York City at Burlesque Idol it's a London show where they like it's almost like American Idol, but you perform burlesque, and then there's someone that wins at the end, and it was on this gorgeous stage at the former Triad Theater, um, and then I, on Friday, I performed a new act that was like a tribute to Victor Victoria or mm -hmm. Zarita, where it was like half bride, half groom. That was amazing. You pulled <laughs> that off so well. Thank you. You really, you know, I have seen an act before that's like half and half, but mm -hmm. to give the other half a separate life of the costume, I mean... If you saw this act, she was her own head was the head of the bride, and she had a bride costume on one side. Then she had half a tuxedo on, and um, 
what's the name of the face? Oh, that's the, the Tilly face from the Coney Tilly Island. Tilly face from Coney Island. Island. So she had a little mask on her shoulder, and she <laughs> played two characters as one person and was able to individually move each side of her body to <laughs> as hard. a separate actor. <laughs> yeah, and um, you really played it off so well to make it look like you were interacting with another person, even though it was the other half of your body. It was incredible, and you Thank were amazing you. at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was um, a new act that I developed because I um, competed in the Miss Coney Island pageant, which mm-hmm. has been going on for 12 years at the Coney Island Circus Side Show. And um, I was really close to winning, but the person that won, her name is Betty Bloomers. Congratulations to Betty. She is awesome. She's the sword swallower at Coney Island. She has she does 40 shows a week there, and it was an honor to perform with every single one of the people. The whole show. show was amazing, and everybody <sighs> did such a great job at it. I, I love Coney, and it was an honor for Bambi to ask me. Bambi the Mermaid, she's been doing this show for 12 years, and she handpicks the best of the best. So for her to think that I'm the best was an honor for me, and all of the girls in the show just did an amazing job. It was fun. So that's one of my acts. And then I have a singing strip to a Connie Francis song. It's like my 60s homage, and I'm in a cute little nighty and robe that I actually bought from Paper Doll Vintage, which is awesome. It's like a baby <laughs> pink color. And um, I'm working on a new fan dance routine for the winter. It's supposed to be like snow inspired, so that's going to be fun. I have a lot of fun stuff. <laughs> and who inspires you? What are some of your inspirations, both past and present? Well, ever since I was a teenager, obviously, like Marilyn Monroe, Betty Page, um, Audrey Hepburn, those are the classics that, in my opinion, every woman should take a lesson from. <laughs> and, um, I, I mean, as far as burlesque goes, Joe Weldon is a huge inspiration to me as to how to be a businesswoman and owning your brand. Um, Lefty Lucy is one of my biggest mentors. Um, Miss Cherry Delight, um, Trixie Little, and the Evil Hate Monkey, um, <laughs> Tigger, World Famous Bob, Dirty Martini, just, you know, Sally Rand. So like, many. So many. <laughs> I can name a million. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, tell us a little bit about Coney Island and uh, oh, how it was Coney affected Island. by Hurricane Sandy also. I know that you were a big help with helping with uh, putting it back together. Yeah. Um, well... Uh, Coney Island was majorly affected by Hurricane Sandy. Um, the entire sideshow stage needed to be reconstructed. The um, Thankfully, all of the historical relics from the museum and the history project upstairs were saved because they were above water. But the entire sideshow and freak bar and gift shop needed to be gutted and renovated. Um, they were able to raise a lot of money for, you know, for all of the reparations that needed to be done, um, but everything was started from scratch, and that I can't believe that that was almost three years ago. Um, yeah. It was literally like, like a funeral march going there, and we. I remember one of the funniest moments of that was um, power washing uh, everything and wearing this like painter's hazmat suit and galoshes and like as glamorous as that can oh be, gosh. you know. <laughs> yeah. And wearing like a mask to like get all the like toxin like not and then in your stripping bo- out of it of course, yeah. right? <laughs> that was a, that was one of my yeah, that was fun. And I remember like Lysol cleaning these like rubber rats with a friend of mine and we they were just like squeaking and filling with water and like we we're like making this as comical as comedy as can be yeah. <laughs> for something so serious, but it's just amazing like as a non-for-profit theater, the way that they were able to band together and find all these performers, friends, to, you know, rebuild such a historic place was mm-hmm. a miracle. And most of us were like, this is never going to happen, but it did, so. Yay, yeah, Coney Island. I and then you. lastly, <laughs> I was going to ask if there are any books or movies you would recommend for anybody just wanting to get oriented with, uh, with burlesque and see kind of what it's about and see if there's any inspiration. Do you have any recommendations? Well, if you're looking to really start off as a performer, the burlesque handbook written by Joe Weldon is the burlesque Bible. You know, you can learn anything about how to use... A feather fans, how to play with boas, how to make your own pasties. It's really just a Bible of burlesque knowledge. And then there, for history, there's the book Behind the Burly Q. Um, there's tons of pinup rockabilly burlesque inspired books out there, but definitely the burlesque handbook. Mm-hmm. That's the textbook for my class. So <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. 
All right, well, for anybody looking to get into burlesque on Long Island and in New York, now we kind of have a better guide. Thank you so much, Betsy, for coming on to Art and Fashion with Dominique. And Thanks for um, having me. Yeah, absolutely. It was such a pleasure. I think a lot of people will definitely be getting into it. Hopefully, people will also sign up for your classes. We have the shop uh, hosting a burlesque class as well here. So whether you want to take a full series or an individual class, uh, there's a lot of places on Long Island that are now getting into it and more shows that are emerging. And, uh, yeah, and a lot of shows to be seen coming up in the near future, too. So I hope to be seeing you on stage very soon again, because I love to always see you on stage. Thanks. And uh, <laughs> for more interviews, you could always catch me on Tuesdays on thedailyblue.com. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. And thank you again, Betsy, for being on the show. Thanks, Don. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>